Hello everyone. Today we're going to do some troubleshooting on a 24 volt uh, battery charger. Um, this charger was used to uh, charge an electric wheelchair. Notice the XLR connector. Uh, that's what plugs into the wheelchair to charge the batteries. Uh, I've plugged it in. Uh, there's a fan here on the back of the unit. The fan doesn't uh, turn and uh, it doesn't charge the batteries in the uh, in the wheelchair so first thought I was gonna plug it in and put a meter across the uh, the leads on the XLR connector but uh, before I do that or before I decided I wouldn't do that I would take a do a physical inspection of uh, the battery charger uh, if you look at the surface of the top of the charger you notice there's a there's a hot spot right here uh, and the plastic is bulging a bit now if we look at the bottom of the unit, I don't know if you can see because of the glare, but there's a brown spot here, and the plastic is also deformed a bit. So this leads me to believe that, uh, without even checking the voltage, that uh, this unit got hot, probably um, took too much current and uh, burned, burned itself out. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to open this up, uh, take a look inside, uh, do some more visual troubleshooting and then do some uh, testing. Uh, I have with me um, an ESR capacitance meter and what this meter does is it in addition to measuring uh, capacitance uh, it measures ESR which is equivalent serial resistance. What that does or what this unit does is sends uh, very quick pulses of voltage uh, across the capacitor and uh, n not enough to charge the capacitor but enough to put voltage across the the capacitor uh, then the you can measure that voltage and do some calculations to determine uh, if there's any a resistance in series with the capacitor the higher the resistance uh, the more the capacitor is probably leaking and is bad uh, the nice thing about this this ESR meter is you can measure capacitors while they're in the circuit. Uh, you can use it also uh, when the when the capacitors are have been removed from the circuit. But the nice thing is that you can test the capacitors when they're in the circuit. There are, are a couple caveats though. If you have a bunch of capacitors uh, in a parallel circuit, and commonly you would have that uh, between the positive and negative rail to help buffer some AC or buffer out. Um, a current to make it smooth or, or the voltage to make it smooth you uh, you would have those capacitors in that case because the capacitors are in parallel you would get uh, this meter would give you a summation of the ESR in the circuit and if one of the capacitors was bad you wouldn't be able to tell which one it was you would then have to remove the capacitor and do an ESR capacitance check with the capacitor out of the circuit so let's crack this box open and see what's inside. Okay, we have the case open now. Let's uh, do some more visual inspection here. Let's look at the bottom of the plastic uh, case of the of the uh, battery charger. If you'll notice in the right hand side there, there's uh, some serious, serious heat damage to the case. Plastic is melted and is bulging. Um, if we compare that to the printed circuit board on the right hand side uh, it got very hot there's some burn marks on the printed circuit board back behind the uh, resistor you probably can't see in there it is really crusty back in there so uh, right around that resistor and capacitor it got very very hot so looking at the leads this is the output side of the battery charger uh, on the left hand side is the input side from um, the 120 volt there and that looks if you look at that it looks very clean the circuit board is uh, almost white there's no burn marks so it looks like the input side is okay uh, the output side got very hot and I'm sure there's some uh, damaged components there so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to use the uh, ESR capacitance meter to check a few of these capacitors in the circuit uh, let's start out with the big capacitor here on the left. Let's flip the board upside down. 
Uh, before we do that ESR check, let's look at the condition of the bottom side of the printed circuit board. Uh, there's some corrosion around this side. Um, on the, le on the left hand, right hand side, uh, if you look right here, looks like there's some burn marks there. Or, and again, that's from the hot side on the output side. So again, even on the bottom side of the board, uh, some, of the, some of the components really got hot enough to, to go all the way through the printed circuit board. Uh, so let's, uh, let's now take a look at the large capacitor here. This capacitor is a 400 volt, 150 microfarads. So we're going to put the ESR capacitance meter on that. You simply uh, just turn it on and then we're going to uh, put it in the circuit. Okay, we got a reading back here. The meter indicates that the capacitance is 139.3 microfarads and the ESR is 0.25. And the higher the ESR, uh, the more chance that the capacitor has been damaged and there's leakage or a complete burned out capacitor. In this case, 139 microfarads. The rated uh, uh, capacity on this capacitor was 150. So this one uh, looks pretty good. Let's uh, move on and now measure uh, the one that got hot on the output side of the board. Okay, in this case, uh, we have an in-circuit leaky indication on the meter with an ESR of 0.13 ohms. So it's telling me that uh, this capacitor more than likely was damaged due to the heat uh, across that capacitor. It's indicating that it's leaking. Okay, we have another capacitor on the output side, a slightly smaller capacitor. This capacitor is a 47 microfarad, 35 volt. So let's go ahead and uh, test that capacitor. Okay, this is saying in circuit leaky, ESR is 0.02 ohms. Okay, so it does indicate that this uh, capacitor is leaky as well. Um, there's also in the burnt area here, there's a series of diodes and resistors. And again, this is right at the point to where there looks like some serious uh, heat damage uh, existed on, or was produced on the board. So I'm going to try to get the, the multimeter in there and check those diodes to see if those diodes have burned out. So we'll do that here as soon as I get my multimeter set up. Okay, I have my meter turned on and set for diode checking mode. And the way you check diodes is you uh, check the polarity one way and see if there's any, uh, any reading. In this case, there's zero, zero, and zero one way. We switch the leads. and we have uh, looks like a 0.55 voltage drop across the first diode 0.558 or 5559 across the second one And it's hard to get in there across the leads because of the larger resistor. See if I can get a better position. And we got a 7, looks like a 708 there before it went off. Yeah, if I have to, if I have to jiggle the leads here. Yeah, 706. So it looks like those three diodes are good. So what I'm going to do now is if you notice in around this section of components there's a lot of potting material and it's hard to get to see what's in behind that or it's around the output leads 
So I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to scrape off all that potting material and see if I can get in there and see if there's any more damaged components. I'm back. We did a little bit more uh, testing with the meter. Cleaned out the uh, potting material underneath this resistor and around the output leads. And it looks pretty nasty in there. Uh, did some more ESR checking on some caps. It looks like we have a total of one, two, three, four bad caps. Uh, the circuit board behind there on the, uh, the negative side of the output lead is just been fried really bad. So um, I already have about an hour of uh, troubleshooting in, in this. The board again only cost me $29, $30. At this point I would have to spend some more time desoldering and trying to replace the components, do some more testing. For $29, $30 it really isn't worth uh, my time to do that. I've already, I've already uh, purchased another uh, battery charger to replace this one. So at this point, uh, it looks like I'm going to recycle most of these components, the wires. Uh, what I don't use, uh, I'll send to the, send to the uh, recycling scrap yard. And uh, that's pretty much uh, it for this, but at least we got a chance to open it up, do a little troubleshooting inside. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned. Watch some more uh, videos on my uh, YouTube site. Thank you.